What's going on, guys? Zuko back with another War Within video. We're going to look at Feral Druid today. Uh, I am just going to be blasting through all the different classes and uh, taking a look at some of the different trees, ones that I find the most interesting, ones that I'm probably going to potentially end up playing in the War Within. Um, so stay tuned for all those different videos. i got a Death Knight one coming up soon. For now, we're going to look at Feral Druid, and we're going to look at Wild Stalker. And I think... Um, this is one where you you can either be Feral or Resto Druid. So it's kind of a combo of the two of them. Has a lot to do with these, these little vines that you're going to grow uh, on the enemy. The TLDR on this tree is that it's actually quite simple. There's really not a lot going on here. It's, it's very passive. Um, the only real interesting interaction I would say is probably Implant, which says Feral Frenzy immediately causes a Bloodseeker Vine. So that means you sort of need to talent into Feral Frenzy if you want to take advantage of that. And I think you probably should. Um, it also might signal that this is this is a decent single target tree in terms of that extra single target ability, Feral Frenzy. You don't always take that in AoE. I think right now in the War Within, you know, Feral Frenzy is part of the tier set bonus. Let's go, or in Dragonflight, sorry, there's the tier set bonus that buffed it. So there's a higher chance you take it there. But there is, there is some AoE going on in this tree, but it's a lot... Um, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to obviously do a bunch of testing and just see. But let's let's go through each of the talents and let's uh, let me explain it to you and then I'll show you some me hitting the dummies for a minute and we can kind of go from there. Okay. So number one, thriving growth. Rip and Rake have a chance to put a vine on the enemy that does forty thousand bleed damage over eight seconds. Okay. The wild growth, regrowth, F flow healing that can also put a bloom. So even as a feral druid, you can hit uh, regrowth, and it has a chance to put this symbiotic bloom on you it doesn't always proc so it is just a chance unfortunately but um you can actually get some extra healing from that especially if you there we go i got one right there right at the very end there's my symbiotic bloom so you can get this um it's especially helpful if you're doing your empowered regrowths that go for free right if you get your predatory swiftness one so that's kind of cool but a little bit of off healing but primarily we're interested in rip and rake doing the extra bleed and from what i understand uh, this is a physical bleed, so I do believe it will benefit from your mastery as well. Increases the damage of your cat form bleed abilities. So I think this counts. I don't know that for sure, but I'm pretty sure it counts for your mastery, okay? Tiger's Fury and attacking from Prowl increases the chance for Shred Rake and Brutal Slash to critically strike. So that's really good in Mythic Plus, where you can potentially re-stealth before you get to the next pack, and then your next rake is going to obviously stun enemies. It does 60% more damage from stealth, and then you're going to get 8% more crit baseline. I've got about 37% uh, crit right now. Wait, yeah, 43 in cat form. So that's a pretty good... You almost have a 50% chance for that to crit, which would be awesome. Um, a lot more damage there. Flower walk during bark skin, your movement speed is increased, and then uh, flowers grow beneath your feet that heal up to 300 allies for 1,500. It sounds really weak, actually. The other one's an Ursal Vortex Root, which is actually pretty good. This one sounded pretty weak to me, and then I sort of thought about the numbers, and bark skin actually lasts for 12 seconds. There's the flowers growing beneath me. So if we do 1,500, if we do 1,500, let's say, right? Up to three enemies. Let's just do it. It's times 12. 12 seconds. It does it once per second for 12 seconds. So it does an 18,000 heal. And then it's times three. Because it actually goes on three different allies. So it's actually kind of like a 54k heal. It's not that great. But it is something. It's a little bit of extra sustain. It does give you more movement speed as well. Um, you're not really doing this for the heal. But the Ursul's one might be much better. Ursul's Vortex are rooted for 30 seconds. That could be really good. Or um, potentially for enemies that you really just want to permanently CC. Ursals can now become a, a, an extra way to do that. Now, if you're using Ursals to like keep a bunch of gnolls stuck inside of a pack so they don't run away. You know, humanoids and gnolls, like they're gnolls. They'll run away once they get low on health. Then obviously this isn't going to help that much. But it's, it's something. Something to think about for sure. When Bloodseeker Thorns expire, they explode dealing aoe damage so that is an interesting portion of this where um you do get some aoe from it as well i'm just gonna do my feral frenzy that's gonna put a bloodseeker vine on it you can see it right there it's doing damage over time it actually does a lot of damage these vines and when it gets going to explode and do aoe damage so you saw that there so that is capped a little bit but um it's just reduced beyond five so it is technically uncapped 
let's call it soft uncapped okay that's pretty cool actually and again because you can get the guaranteed feral frenzy bloom you're going to be getting lots of these blooms i'll show you in a second but they do there's a lot of blooms that come at that 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 will um sort of be created i don't know how else to say that you can create a lot of blooms uh very very quickly so this is not something that's like a once per minute proc it's more like uh 10 times per minute probably honestly you're getting quite a few of them Bloodseeker Vines increase the damage your abilities deal to the affected enemies by 10%. So, again, uh, just good for AoE damage, but I would say a little bit better on single target damage. You can see why I was saying it's a little bit better for single target damage. Because I think in a single target fight, you can have a bloom on a boss for, like, almost the entire time. It might be, like, 70%, 80% uptime. In AoE, you're, you're, you're not blooming all 10 mobs in an AoE pack. Now, there are ways to help with that. I'll show you in a second, but... You're, you're realistically not, you're going to be blooming like one to three mobs in a 10 mob pack at a time. So, you know, something to think about there. So like this 10% damage bonus is only going to apply to those enemies, right? Damage and healing up by 5%, Moonfire damage up. You're not really ever going to take Lunar Inspiration, I don't think so. But whatever, 5% more damage is good. Wild Growth and Rake last longer. That's pretty good. So um, that can actually go toe-in-toe uh, -toe with Circle of Life and Death, where you can, like, your Rake is lasting longer, and then your Circle of Life Death is making it expire quicker. So it's, like, doing more damage, actually, in that window. Does that make sense? So um, you could take Circle. I'm just experimenting with talents right now. I don't know what the best talent setup is, right? So don't, uh, don't really look into that too much. Bloodseeker Vines last two more seconds. While a target affected by a Bloodseeker Vine dies... The vine jumps. So this is where you could get a little bit more AoE blood vine uh, damage going. However, the target has to die. So like, realistically, a lot of the packs in Mythic Plus, the mobs have similar health pools. There are going to be some mobs that have lower HP, but like, the vine would need to be on the target as it's dying, right? So like, the, the vines only last for eight seconds. So, like, what are the chances you're going to have a vine? First of all, you have to have a vine on a mob. That mob has to be a lower health than other mobs. Then it has to have the vine on them as it's dying. There's a lot of, like, ifs there, right? A lot of stipulations. So, you could also just do this. For each act of Bloodseeker Vine, your damage is increased by 2%. That is quite strong, I think, right? In AoE, you get three or four vines going. Um, you could realistically have you know six to eight maybe up to ten percent more damage at all times that's pretty strong in my opinion rip uh ferocious bite and uh damage up by four six percent and then your rejuve efflow and life bloom are up that doesn't apply to us regrowth healing on yourself up by 50 percent. this is pretty good actually because again you're getting that free regrowth every single time you use a five combo point finisher uh and regrowth is no slouch right it hits pretty hard so like, my regrowth right now hits for about 10k, or sorry, 30,000, and then about 10,000 over 12 seconds. I'm going to buff that by 50%. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And then it also has a chance to, of course, put a symbiotic bloom on me. Uh, healing you receive is increased by 10%. Also could be good. Maybe better in raid, where you have multiple healers healing you. Could be really good. Here's the Feral Frenzy talent. Um, puts a Bloodseeker Vine on an enemy, or... When Bloodseeker Vines uh, grow, they have a 10% chance to cause another growth of the same type. So when it says type here, it means a healing growth or a damaging growth. So whenever you create a, a vine, you have a 10% chance to create another vine. That's actually quite good considering how many vines you create. So um, that might be a really good talent to take in AoE. And then again, the Feral Frenzy one might be better for single target. Or you could spec into Feral Frenzy and then get the guaranteed one. Um, it's up to you. Again, I, I'm not sure which one's better. We're just going to go with the Feral Frenzy one for now. So again, if you look at the tree as a whole, is it really changing our gameplay as a Feral Druid? Is it massively changing how we want to uh, operate our, our rotation? Not really, no. It's not really modifying that at all. It's just adding to that. You run in, you're going to do some damage, and it's going to add some vines to the enemies. So you'll see here, let's do Feral Frenzy. There's our first vine. And then uh, we'll do Convoke, because it can like Convoke's fun. Convoke, you could get you could get a second uh, Feral Frenzy, right, from Convoke. I don't know. I don't think Convoke's better than Incarn. I was just trying to experiment with the whole Feral Frenzy tech. If you get a Feral Frenzy from Convoke, it does, in fact, give you a Bloodsoaker, Bloodseeker Vine. Sorry, Bloodsoaker. A Bloodseeker. But you can see, guys, look how many Vines are up. 
Like, there's a lot. They're kind of up all the time, right? This is just three targets. Like, you're going to get actually, I think, way more in AoE because you're applying a rip to all nearby enemies. Imagine if you had 10 targets, right? I only have three targets here, and I'm still maintaining at least, like, one vine every second, basically, which is pretty cool. And then those vines are exploding, and they're doing AoE damage every time they explode, which is really good. So... My thought here is that you're going to have quite a few vines that are up, like, all the time. Which, to me, signals that um, in AoE, it's actually going to be quite good. And also, there's a chance that um, some of the other talents that I'm not taking right now, which, like, will spread the vines for free, those might be really good talents to take. Uh, because every, you, you might get targets dying quite a bit, but you also, every time you create a vine... You might have a chance to create another one. I think that is potentially a much better talent. The twin sprouts could be very, very good, um, considering the fact that you might have 10, 12 targets that all have rip on them. Because Primal Wrath is going to apply rip to all nearby enemies, right? I wish I had the ability to show you, like, 10 target cleave and how many vines we're going to be uh, summoning. But you, have to, you just have to imagine, right? That damage from rip has a chance to spawn the vines. And you just saw how many were being spawned there. So I think something like Twin Sprouts is probably the way to go. And then you can drop Feral Frenzy and take, like, Circle of Life and Death. And uh, that's going to increase, I believe, the damage of the vines as well. Because it'll make those symbiotic vines do damage more quickly. Um, we're going to have to see how quickly that is. Let me just see here. Did it, did it already change that? Let me just do this for a second. I think it already changed it. Uh, over 4.8 seconds. Okay. These blooms do damage over 4.8 seconds. Mark that for a second. And it changed to six seconds. So yes, it is in fact, Circle of Life and Death is immediately modifying how quickly these are going to do their damage. So they're going to do damage faster, which is pretty cool. Um, you could and then go Resilient Flourishing if you wanted to. Let's just do that for a second. So it does 29,000 damage over six seconds. Let's change this. We're going to go Circle of Life and Death plus the extra extension. So now it's 6.4 seconds and it does 39,000 damage instead. A lot more damage in about the same amount of time. So these are the kinds of combos you can do here. And again, like I said, if you have your dots on multiple enemies, I do really believe that um, it's going to be a lot better for you. Just dot here. There we go. We got a bunch running now. Let's see how many blooms we get. Might get a bloom over there. So every time we create a bloom, there was three right there. Look at that. Every time we create a bloom, there's a chance we might create another bloom. And then those blooms, every time they expire, they're going to detonate. So it is actually really cool in an AoE sense. It's just about whether or not you can actually generate them quickly and, and sort of what the proc rate's going to be. Let's get some more going over here. Let's do a little finisher. There we go. We'll do some more over here. Okay. There we go. We got a bloom over there now. So you can see, guys, I think in like in a really mass AoE... Uh, point in like mythic plus i do think that there's going to be a good chance you're going to get a lot of these blooms and they're going to detonate and do a lot of aoe damage which is cool so that's cool i like it it is very passive however like it's very passive there's not a lot going on here except for this you could go with the feral frenzy thing i'm actually starting to think twin sprouts is probably way better so it's maybe a lot less of a single target tree than I was initially thinking. Maybe it's more of the AoE tree. I think they both have AoE and single target components. But that's it for Feral Druid. This is the tree that is uh, Wild Stalker. I think it's a good extra chunk of damage you're going to be getting. Lots of vines are going to be sprouting, causing lots of damage. You're going to be getting a little bit of extra utility from your bark skin. Some more healing, some more movement speed. Or the Ursul's um, utility is really cool. Other than that, guys, it is a little bit boring, okay? It's, it's just sort of like more damage is kind of what you're getting. There isn't a lot to really play around. The more targets that you can hit with your Primal Wrath, the more blooms you're going to get. That's the bottom line. So it's good. It's boring. It's probably probably strong, I would say, in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you going to play Feral Druid in the War Within? I would love to hear from all of you down there. Thank you so much again for watching. Love y'all. I'll see you in the next one.